Good evening. It is I, Rankar. It is my pleasure to be with you in this evening. You have all relaxed yourself very nicely, and you have followed the thoughts that the medium was expressing about God manifesting everything. And how, as he has manifested everything from the substance of his own being, how everything in this creation is but an extension, an expression of God, and is made up of God's being. Because that is all there was, that everything was manifested from the substance of God's being. And so you all are part of God's being. And it's important to accept and recognize your oneness with God. If you do this in every day, you will find within yourself a peace and calmness, tranquility, if you will, which enables you to enjoy your life. You will be able to distance you somewhat from the hurts and fears of the things that are going on in the outside world, knowing that you will be okay. Because as an expression of God, you have the infinite intelligence of God as part of yourselves. And you can always go within to that aspect of God that you are and that you have. And you can find the solutions that you need. You can figure out what is your best course of action. And so you will always be at peace and harmony and know just what to do and what actions you need to take at all times. And so I am here just to encourage you to find that wisdom and inspiration that is part of yourself so that you do not need further instruction from me, but now you can manage your own works, your own thoughts, your own actions, and become the powerful creator that you have the potential to be. And so I am pleased in this evening to continue to take your questions and help you to find the magnificent person, the magnificent aspect of God that you each are in this day. And so are there any questions for me in this evening? Please speak up and ask. I understand what you're saying as to, you know, going inside ourselves and getting the answers. But my my question is how how do we do that when some of the things that we do are like immediate reactions? Like, I don't know, something happens and you just react a certain way. Yes. You don't stop to think or meditate or do anything because you're reacting right away. How do you get around that? And it is sometimes important for you to react right away. You do not have uh -huh. time to think and uh, go within in many situations. And you do not have to go within at all if you feel confident of what you are thinking and you are doing. If you have found that your reaction sometimes um, was not the highest and best one, you can always revise that. You can, you can choose to um, think differently, say that, no, you want to cancel that previous thought, that previous action, especially if it was words that you said that were unkind or unhelpful or not nice. You can cancel that. You can immediately ask for forgiveness. You can it depends upon the situation, of course, that the person is not there. There is no one you have immediately offended, but you have not reacted in the right way. You can say, oh, that was a mistake and cancel that action. 
and then think about what it is you need to do. You need only to do the things that you want to do um, and what you feel are best for you. So in those instances when you react and you realize that the reaction was not the best one for yourself or not the best one for the situation that you are in or that you are reacting to, then you can always undo it because you have the power of God within you. And God can undo what he has done if he feels it is important. You have to remember that you are a very powerful person. And so having reacted and perhaps reacting badly, you have the power to change that, either through the words that you say or the actions that you take. You can always say, forgive me to a person. That was a bad reaction, and I would like to take it back. Now let us find a more harmonious thing or situation that we can do to fix the situation and make it the best way possible for both you and for me. You see, because you are powerful, you can do that. I hope that is helpful. Uh, somewhat. I, I still don't think we have any control over some of our reactions. Like when certain things happen, we just react and do certain things. And then later on, you say, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have done it that way. I should have done it a different way. Or this wouldn't have happened if I didn't do that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, but all the things that we do in the moment seem to be just reactions I, I i and i don't know how to stop reactions or to figure out where they're coming from to change them beforehand uh, oh now i understand your question you have reactions and you would like to be more deliberate yes yes i understand that now the problem here is that your reactions are habits and so you want to change your habits in order to not react. So you have to make a deliberate decision that you want to stop reacting to things. You want to think about things. And so I believe one of the things that uh, people who specialize in this subject say is to count to three before you say or do anything. Now, I know you can count to three very quickly if you want to, especially if you really want to react and you have something that you just have to say or something you have to do, you may not want to wait and deliberately count to three to sell your, slow yourself down. However, it is a technique you can apply. You make the decision that you will always count to three before you act or you react so that you can consider what you are doing. You make that decision to yourself and then you simply try to implement it. And perhaps you will do it once in a day. And that is a victory because now you have obtained in that moment more control of the way you reacted by delaying the reaction. Mm -hmm. And maybe a week from now, you will find that you continually do it at least twice during the day. And then you will advance to three and sometimes four and five and six times during the day. Hopefully the need to uh, stifle a reaction will not be more than that numbers in a day because that means you are making decisions up front about the things that you are doing and the, thing, the situations you are putting yourself in that are not the best for you because they're giving you opportunities to react rather than to thoughtfully act. Do you understand what I mean by that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm 
yeah I, I think even with a, a workplace too sometimes that's true because you always wind up in the situation that <laughs> you're not happy with and you want to say something and you know you shouldn't say anything and I guess you should just change jobs <laughs> well yes you can change jobs and if you are always finding yourself in a situation where you cannot control your thoughts you obviously um, need to continue to work on controlling your reactions but changing jobs would certainly eliminate that situation from you a great deal and make you happier in the long run because you're more in harmony with what is going on around you. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Already. So I hope that now helps. Oh, yes, very much. Thank you. You. Are there other questions? Yes, this is Mary Jo. Um, I have a question. I am um, wondering if you can tell me if I will continue my employment with AT&T. We're <clears throat> getting, um, having a lot of layoffs coming up in the near future and I'm just feeling um, more anxiety about it for some reason than, than usually. Yes. I understand. So your question really is, are you going to be laid off? Yes. Um, I will try to give you an answer since it is a question about uh, whether you will be laid off. I believe you will not be laid off. Um, you have been a long-term employee. You have been a satisfactory employee. And you have um, seniority, I believe it is called, which should protect you in this instance. I cannot say in the future. Um, but in this first instance, I do not believe you will be laid off. The, um, you will continue to find work. Um, they have a definite number of people in mind and um, there is still evaluations going on. So I cannot see um, fully beyond this point. Um, but it does not look like you are close to being laid off. So I think that you shall continue to be employed. Thank you. That helps. Thank you. You're welcome. And be optimistic and know that you are going to keep your job. That optimism, that knowledge that you carry and send out is important in tilting the scale, so to speak, in your favor. It is always helpful to make, um, to make um, affirmations uh -huh. uh, of for what you want to manifest in your life. Now, so that you can affirm that I continue to be gainfully employed in the job, in a job that I like, enjoy, which pays me well. Uh, say something like that. I continue always to be employed in a job that I like, I enjoy, and it pays me well. And that is important for you. Um, I am an important person in, in the work that I do for this corporation. My importance is recognized by this corporation. Things like this will put out the right vibration. Now you will remember, you successfully joined the group for the prosperity affirmations. And you began them. If you are not continuing them, please, you must start all over again. And know that so just as those affirmations brought to you some uh, financial 
money, some surprise money, he was calling it, that that was because of what you were thinking about, not just what you did and the clues that were given to you, but the affirmations you were making already and which were made on your behalf. And so you want to continue those affirmations and continue to know that you are a very prosperous person, that money always comes to you before you even need it, and that you always continue to be employed, gainfully employed. And these thoughts will all contribute to making sure that you avoid the layoffs that are coming from your corporation. Thank you. Uh, are there other questions? It is time for you to speak up if you have a question. Makar, this is Tanya, I have a question. Yes. I'm outside, so I hope I have crickets if, in the background, sorry. Um, I don't know if I can mention your procedure because I don't know if it's private from the group. Uh, is that private from the group, your procedure that you'll be having? Oh, um, no, it is not private. I guess I would like that to the ask- um, will be having, That the medium will be having? I'm sorry, what? You are asking about the procedure that the medium will be having, is that correct? Correct, that the medium will be having, I think this week uh, with your uh, her eyes. Yes. And I was wondering if there's something that we as a group can do for you for healing or if Dr. Benjamin can assist with healing or anything that can help you, the medium. Well, thank you very much uh, for your desire to help the medium. Um, there will be many people praying for her. So, and praying for the hands of the surgeon that they do their job properly. And so um, it is almost, it is guaranteed that it will come out well, it's the procedure. So um, I think there is nothing more, of course, the mediums, own guides, um, Dr. Benjamin especially, will be there to make sure that everything goes correctly and um, everything will be fine for the medium. It is appreciated, your concern is appreciated, but um, know that she has an army of friends and a group of people who will be including uh, her in their um, prayers and sending healing so that she will be well taken care of. Of course, there will be a time period for healing. Um, I think she will be discussing the fact that she will not be available next week to um, speak. Um, not that it is not possible for her to be act as a medium, and there is no need for her to act as a medium at this time. It is better for her to be resting. And although the medium uh, situation is not taxing on her body per se, and we always try to leave it in very good order and healed, um, it will still be, uh, there is no need to. We will give her a week off. And if, more time is needed, um, there will be notifications given by um, email to all. Thank you for your concern. Thank you so much for sharing that. That comforts me on your behalf. <laughs> on the behalf of the meeting, thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, since it has been brought up at this time, in case there is anyone who is currently on this broadcast, um, the procedure is that the medium will be getting a cornea transplant. 
there is damage to her right eye. Uh, cornea is swollen and is not uh, shedding moisture properly as it should. And so they have to replace um, not the whole cornea, but the lining of the cornea to um, which is what is not working properly. And they have that capability and it should be carried through without a hitch, especially with everyone praying so that everyone now knows what the issue is. And as I have said, the medium will not be present next week. She will explain that to you when she comes out of trance. Are there any more questions while, I'm, while I am present? In the hospital, um, I get a lot of individuals who uh, pray to God while they're not well, but then they blame themselves for, there's an odd thing where they blame themselves for being not well. And I, I, it conflicts me because sometimes they're not well because they didn't know they drank water that was tainted or they had a job where the air was not pure. My father, I just found out 30 years later, worked at a school where they've had a, a very unusually high number of brain tumors. And 30 years later, they are now finding this out. And we thought he maybe drank too much or he didn't take care of himself. So we always blamed, um, I always blamed that. Like I almost actually blame my father for his own ill health now finding out that the school where he worked was contaminated with uranium from some some dirt. Um, and so they're investigating that. So I guess I get confused when people blame themselves, but then they turn to God for healing. Um, I don't know what my question is, other than if you have anything to enlighten us well, on with that. You have, you have explained your conflict. And okay. I, I can help you with understanding uh, at this point in time. Um, if people can attribute their illness or problem to something they feel they should have known about and they could have avoided if they had known about it, then of course, that is part of the reason they blame themselves. Now they pray to God because they were taught to pray to God. But for the most part, um, the traditional Christian religions and many religions always put the prayer to God in the, in the form of a petition that God might reject, at least in their own mind. When they are praying to God, they are always thinking that they may not be worthy and maybe a healing will not occur, um, that they might not get better, um, that they don't deserve to be healed. They are, are conflicted in this because they have been taught to think of God as this person that is separate from themselves with almighty power who then picks and chooses who will be blessed and who will not be blessed based on their behaviors. And that he is constantly judging them. Now they have not reasoned this out carefully to understand that everything in this creation is part of God. And that as such, or that everything in this creation is made up of God, as the medium talked about it in her opening meditation. Because God was all there was. Who is God? What is God? God is the power, the energy of the universe. He is the energy. And all things are made up of energy. 
They are all vibrating at different rates of speed. And so some things are solid and some things are liquid and some things are airy because they all have a different vibrational rate, but they are all energy and they can all be broken down into energy. So the basic substance of everything in this creation is that which you refer to as energy. And these energy molecules or atoms or whatever you like combine in different ways to make up different substances. And one of the ways they combine and that has been brought forth in this creation is the is human beings, as well as all the animals and the plants and the trees. And so if you go to your source, you yourself are a direct expression of your parents because you are made up of the heredity, the genes that come from both your mother and your father. And so you are a combination of all these genes that continue to bring life into your body and to grow your body from the littlest egg and sperm that united till it grew into an infant and then proceeded to continue to grow. This is the way that God created this creation so that it propagates itself. And Everything within this creation it has some randomness to it or because of the many different ways that the energies can combine themselves. And sometimes everything goes well and sometimes it doesn't go as well. And a child may be born deaf or be born blind or may have something else wrong with it. Um, but it is just the way of creation that allows this infinite number of variations to be expressed. And every situation has the potential to be remedied and changed by the mind. Because what is the mind doing? The mind is radiating energy, as well as the heart it is radiating energy, which affects the energies throughout the creation, and especially those energies that are most near to you as a person and to each person. And so these energies can shape what is happening. And as it has been affirmed in the meditation, as actors or as actions, um, you create the world in which you live through your words and your thoughts and your perceptions in particular. So you look around you, and of course, you make judgments based on what your parents told you and what you believe to be true. And so if they said God is separate from you, then that is how you think of God until you change your thought. And then you will know that since you are made up of the substance of God, you have to be part of God. You must be part of God. Because, as she has said, that which has been created always remains part of its creator. You have children. And, of course, those children are always part of you because you contributed to their DNA. They cannot not become your child. They remain your child. And they have lives of their own because you have given them that ability to be on their own and do their own thing, the same as God gave to us all. And so if you begin to think about that and reason it out, you will see that you are God. 
And you can make affirmations such as, I know that all is well in this world. I see peace and I see harmony. I see people getting along because my family members all get along with one another. I get along with my friends. I get along with my coworkers. I create peace. I pray for others. I give them love. I create goodness through my actions. And I help people to get well, to overcome illnesses from the things that I do because I work at a hospital. And so if you know that you are God, you can make all these affirmations that you heal people, you create goodness, you create life as you did when you brought your children into existence. You create peace and harmony as you do when you try to make peace between your children or you make peace with someone else in your life and that you share love and that this love is the desire for the other person, your love for another is the desire for that other to have goodness and happiness and good luck and prosperity and good health manifesting in their lives. That is love. You wish them well in every way. You wish them success. That is love. And so you have that power for it to come through because you think and you think this energy that radiates out into the universe. And that what you think about is what you manifest. It is what you create for yourself as well as what you create for others. And so knowing yourself is God. So to get back to your original question and the conflict that most people feel within themselves, since they feel they are separate from God, since they know that they have made mistakes, that they have done things that might not always have been nice. They know that in their minds, they create a jeopardy about having good health. They create a jeopardy about whether God will heal them. In other words, it is in question because they know and they feel unworthy because of their past mistakes. And it is they who are judging themselves, as it always is, that you judge yourself. And so those people who are sick believe that they are unworthy because of their past actions. And they ask God to heal them rather than knowing as God that they can be healed, that they will be healed the right medications, the right procedures, the right treatments, the right therapies will be given to them and they will be healed. So I hope that helps you to understand the conflict. Even though I may have seemed to have meandered about everything, it is because it is a, an, a misunderstood situation for most people but I hope you now understand it better. You cannot help them by telling them that they are God. You can only help them by assuring them that they will be healed, that they will get the right treatments and the right therapies because the doctors and nurses all endeavor to ensure that they bring about the good health of others. That is why they became doctors and nurses. And those who will help and work in hospitals. Most of those people are truly concerned for the welfare of the patients. And so all effort 
is made to bring about healing to all the patients. But some patients may not believe they deserve to be healed. And so without realizing it, they will be resisting their own healing. Are there other questions or is that helpful? That was fantastic. The, the vibration, the answer to the vibration, that was perfect. Thank you. You are most well. Are there any other questions for me while I am present? And if there appear to be no more questions for me, then I will simply wish you all a wonderful week, two weeks, and I will be back when the meeting is back in service, so to speak. And I give you all my blessings. Good night. Hi, I'm back. Okay, well, um, I think that is all for me right now. Nobody has a, anyone has a question for me? No, okay. Well, remember, I love you all. Good night. Good night. Good evening. Okay, I'm back. Let me turn off the... Uh, oh, thank you. Stop.